I have dollop tour dates to announce for the year 2024 of our Lord J Town. We have our 10th anniversary show coming up in Los Angeles on April 27th. Guests are Karen Kilgariff and James Adomian. And then we are going to Australia starting on May 13th in Perth, May 16th in Sydney, May 18th in Brisbane, May 20th in Canberra, May 22nd in Melbourne, and May 24th in Adelaide. You can get your tickets at dollappodcast.com. Colorado landlords and property owners, there is an avalanche of recent landlord laws sweeping parts of the nation, including Colorado. It's enough to worry many property owners about the future of their real estate income and ownership. We've created a short video talking about what's happening and what you may be able to do to protect your income and investment. Go to LandlordRescue.com and enter your email for instant access. That's LandlordRescue.com. Securities offered through Emerson Equity, LLC. Member FINRA SIPC. Emerson is not affiliated with any other entity herein. You're listening to The Dollop. My name is Dave Anthony. I am a host of The Dollop. The Dollop is an American history podcast. Each week I read a story from American history to my friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is about. That was just a noise. That was fun. I mean, we like, you know, you like to do a little something before it goes. And, I know, do. Maybe that was a little mailed in, but it's still, yeah, we're having yeah. a conversation, so it's organic. Gary. God, do you want a little hit of dude? I'll do one bottle. <laughs> people say this is funny? Not Gary Guerra. Dave, okay. Someone or something is tickling people. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tickling Podcast. Okay. There's you are there. Queen Fakey of Made Up Town. All hail Queen Shit of Liesville. A bunch of religious virgins go to mingle. And do what? Pray. Hi, Gary. No. I see done, my friend. No. 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 <laughs> Gareth? Yes. Life in 17th century New England was hard enough for servants. Because of deflate gate. Right. Yeah. But George Spencer but George Spencer's physical appearance made it even harder. Oh, Jesus. He lived in Boston and is described in historical accounts as ugly and balding. Okay. He also had but one eye for use. The other half, a pearl in it is whitish and deformed. So he had a glass eye. Okay. And not a good one. Yeah, no. A, 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 if, a, it almost sounds like it's square. Yeah, it sounds like he had a <laughs> fucking, like, uh, just maybe a patch. Sounds like it might have been patch time. <laughs> the eye gave him a sinister appearance. And if you had a sinister appearance in the 1640s, you were basically a walking demon. So, what are we, three sentences deep? <laughs> and this guy's life is a walking nightmare? <laughs> Spencer was also notorious for his use of profanity, vulgar behavior, and generally being a habitual troublemaker. <laughs> We're starting off dark. But his worst crime of all was being an open atheist. Oh, wow. He only read the Bible when ordered to by his employer, and he never prayed. <laughs> Why should I pray? I've got one eye, he said. Fair fucking I mean, he's point. Got, he's got a point. Yeah. If you're walking around and you look like that, uh, people are like, thank God. You're like, nah. <laughs> nah, I won't thank God. <laughs> but despite being charged with various crimes, the worst punishment he ever got... Looking a, in a mirror. ...was a flogging for the crime of receiving stolen goods. Okay. It was this flogging that likely led to his moving to the New Haven colony in what is now known as Connecticut. All right. But George Spencer did not manage to keep out of trouble for long. Between his sinister appearance, his atheism, and his reputation for immoral behavior, he had difficulty keeping jobs for too long. Uh, shocking. Although the immoral behavior that he engaged in was most described by crazy religious nuts who were his neighbors and fellow colonists. Okay, so right? he was probably maybe not that crazy. Probably not like, that he bad. He doesn't believe in the clouds. He was regularly accused of various illegal and depraved sexual acts. Okay. And then, in 1642, came the birth of the piglet. All right. So, listen, we've been doing this for a little while. Uh, and, um... Yes? Um... Now, now, I know we make it clear that I have no idea what the topic's about. And, uh... Um... I just, uh, mm -hmm. 
I just, I know that when you say all these bad things and then came the birth of the piglet right. after weird sexual, uh -huh. I'm, Hang I'm nervous. You should be. <laughs> the piglet belonged to one of Spencer's former employees. The piglet was described as being a prodigious monster with only one eye. When some who viewed the piglet commented on how much it resembled George Spencer, the accusations began. Oh, God. George Spencer, they said, had obviously been having sex with a pig. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> well, look at the pig. It's only and look at fucking George. It's only got one eye. He's got one eye. He's been fucking it. He's fucked it. He fucked it. Now he's got a little baby of his own. Oh, my God. Now, sex between humans and animals has always been illegal in most places. But what made it a big deal in places like New Haven Colony was the held belief that such a crime against nature could produce bizarre hybrids with human and animal traits. <laughs> Though no actual cases of such hybrids were ever reported, enough examples of deformed livestock and children happened to keep the rumors alive. People accused of bestiality were prosecuted just as harshly as witches, and the animals <laughs> believed to be tainted by the crime were executed. Well, we all know the witch treatment was not solid. <laughs> <laughs> so George Spencer was accused of fathering the one-eyed piglet after having sex with one of his former employees' pigs. Uh, uh, I mean... Yeah, uh, that's very... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little unfair. As far as his Puritan accusers were concerned, the piglet's deformity was deemed as an act of God to reveal George's crime. Well, obviously, God made the well, pig. Well, look, I mean, he doesn't believe in God. God gave a one-eyed pig because he's been fucking pigs. Hello. Duh. One plus one is two. Hello. <sighs> Though there was no evidence... Besides the piglet in question, George was thrown into prison. Of course. I mean, there was a pig with one eye. What more do you need to hear? <laughs> Exhibit everything. The other eye looks like his good eye. <laughs> exactly. George Spencer insisted repeatedly that he was innocent. I haven't fucked a pig. Ah, uh, look, he's winking. He's lying. No, it's, I haven't fucked a pig. Look at his eye. He's lying. Christ. A local magistrate then told him that he would be treated mercifully if he confessed to the crime. Ah. Uh. Seeing how harshly other prisoners were treated, George... Oh, George, no! No! He has to say he big fucked? George eventually confessed because he thought that would keep him from being executed for yeah. pig humping. Oh, he fucked the pig. All right, all right. So, yeah, I fucked a pig. Lots of times, and I love my pig, son. And now it's my boy. It's my boy. George Jr. George, little George. Little piggy. Uh, yeah, so I did that, and uh, it was nice. Yeah, lovely, yeah. Ooh, cross. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, I think about it sometimes, I do. Ooh, being inside that oh, loving pig. little piggy. Ooh. Sorry, is this confession too long? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how long do you want this? <laughs> I've got graphic. <laughs> apologies. He quickly discovered that that was not the case and retracted his confession, insisting that he only confessed to please the magistrate. George remained in prison. Yeah, look, you're pig fucked if you do, you're pig fucked if you don't. Then other magistrates visited him in prison, all with the same message. Confess. Look, and just we'll say go you easy fucked on the pig. You. Look, here's the deal. If you just say you fucked the pig, we'll let you go. I said Sorry. I fucked the pig and you beat me. What's that? I said I fucked the pig and I was beaten. Right, but this time it'll be okay. Fuck it. Yeah? I... Yeah? Had sex with the pig. Pig and that one-eyed pig is my boy. Cut off his head. Fuck! Finally, he was persuaded to convince, confess once more. He also confessed to lying, being openly contemptuous of the colony's laws, and profaning the Lord's Day, which he reportedly called the Ladies' Day. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's great. This guy's great. I mean, this guy's like the hero yeah. of the New Haven colony. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even fuck I pigs. Mean, he's just walking around fucking with everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. 
George had his limits, though, and flatly denied engaging in homosexual acts with other colonists or the local native tribes. I mean, that, it Look, really is. Uh, all right. All right. I fucked a pig. Yeah. But I didn't fuck any gents. You fucked pigs, I didn't but you can't fuck guys. And I didn't fuck any fucking Indians. All right. Well, all right. You know how the hierarchy goes. What's that? Bestiality. Ah. Uh, Gay sex. What? Native American sex. I mean, Indian. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So you fucked the pig. Yeah. But you're not gay. No, sir. And you don't like Indians. I do not. You're just not. a just a common pig fucker. All right, all right. As long as you know your line. When George finally came to trial, his confessions were used against him as evidence, even though he he had retracted them all under oath. There were still no witnesses to the alleged pig sex, except for the pig. <laughs> This was a problem for the prosecution because New Haven colonies demanded two witnesses for any capital crime. Okay. Okay, now think about that. Yeah. So that means if you murder a guy two in front of to just one other guy, you That's it. You're you're fine. <laughs> you're totally cool. And if you commit sodomy, the two you, people have to watch you fuck that well, guy. Well, it could be the guy you fucked. And if you fuck a pig, and you just need a friend. If you fuck a pig, you need to have two humans present. Or, yeah, a couple of guys watching. Yep. Which is normal. Totally normal. Who wouldn't feel comfortable fucking a pig in front of a couple of dudes? Well, I I bought the tickets. (laughs) Yeah. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. So, um, in this case, the judges solved the witness problem by using George's confessions to name him as one of the witnesses. That's bullshit. And the other witness... No, 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 Dave. What was the deformed pig? Shut the fuck. I mean, what what is this? Is this animal court? Is this like a Disney show? Is Eddie Murphy as the Uh, judge in this movie? Oh, God. A pig? Yeah. You call a pig as a witness? Yeah. Well, he's deformed, so they just went, look at him. And that was his witness testimony. Ron, He's got put, one eye. Put your hoof on the Bible. Come on now. Raise your other hoof. <laughs> All right. Do you not understand anything that I'm saying right now? So help you God. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. If it's an affirmative, you blink with one eye. Did he fuck you? Up. Oh. oh, guilty. There we go. Guilty. After the judge declared himself abundantly satisfied with the Good evidence. Good judge. Good judge. George Spencer was found guilty of violating Leviticus 2015, i.e., quote, if a man has sexual relations with an animal, he is to be put to death and you must kill the animal. George continued to protest his innocence and said there was no real evidence against him, mostly because there was no real evidence against him. (laughs) He was sentenced to death. On April 8th, 1642, the piglet was killed with a sword while George was hanged. He Jesus was the, Christ. He was the first white settler to be executed in Connecticut. Cases of zoophilia continued to be prosecuted throughout New England, but only one other incident involved the birth of a deformed animal. Oh, no. That was the trial of Thomas Hogg. Oh. Uh, Do you want to say it? Well, is Hogg his last? His name's Hogg. He's got to be a pig fucker. That's why? It occurred five years after George Spetzer was executed. Thomas was a servant who was charged with molesting a sow belonging to his employer. In Hogg's case, he was charged following the birth of a piglet that had, quote, a fair and white skinned and head as Thomas Hogg's is. So. Yeah. We're. The is. Is one of the main pieces of evidence that his last name's Hogg? Well, the main piece of evidence is, is that, that it had a flesh similar to his. That it had a skin it had tone white, close. It had white skin. It was fair. Like he was like a fair guy, fair skinned guy. And then the pig was also pretty fair skinned. Okay. So it's just that's a matter of. Yeah. Okay. Well, so. clearly, if that's. If the colors match, uh-huh. then the fucking happened. Right. Okay. That's normal. His 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 girlfriend is the one who turned him in. Oh, of course. Because she saw the resemblance. Yeah. She okay. was like, look at that. He was like, yeah, I know. It's a really white pig. She was like, I knew it. While Hogg denied the charge, his previous convictions for indecent exposure worked against him. Well. 
I love that that's not a really bad crime. Yeah, no, yeah, no, not at all. Like just walking around showing people your dick yeah, you in can show Puritan your America is yep. no big deal. Nope. But when a pig shows up that's got fair skin, oh, well... The time uh, to do- dodge the book, asshole. It's getting oh, thrown your way. Yeah. <clears throat> While Hogg denied the charge, his previous convictions for indecent exposure worked against him. After being in prison for buggery and exposure, the court decided to investigate the charge of sexing up a pig. <laughs> Taking Hogg to his employer's barnyard, he was instructed to fondle several of the sows. <laughs> Including the one he had allegedly molested. What? What do you mean, what? Gathering evidence. We need to take it out of the courtroom for a little while and have you jack off some pigs. Uh, All right, now go finger that one. (laughs) Okay, Okay, have a little rub on that one there. All right. Now put your tongue in that one's snout a little. There we go. Now go ahead. You want to fuck that one there? You want to go ahead and put it in there? Suck its curly tail till it's hard. Mm. There we go. Where's that snout going, young man? Huh? Excuse me, how many more of these pigs do I need to fondle and try to fuck? I'm almost done. You're almost done with what? Don't worry about it. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> According to official records... The I other- mean, official sow molestation <laughs> records. <laughs> official. According to official records, the other sows ignored him while the sow in question showed a, quote, working of lust. Which was so extreme that, quote, she powered out seed before them. So he made a pig come in front of him? I, I guess, but it says she, but... But I mean, if... I mean, it's an upsetting line, no matter how you... He made a lady pig come. It sounds like he made a lady pig come. How long... He must have been... Well, you gotta follow... Fondling. You gotta follow court orders. Keep going. I think she's almost finished. (laughs) I think she's coming. Hogg was later sentenced to be whipped and imprisoned for, quote, filthiness, lying, and pilfering. But the bestiality charge was dropped due to insufficient evidence. Uh, Good. Bestiality continued to be prosecuted, (laughs) though it was stopped being being a capital crime by the end of the 17th century. The last major case, case in New England in 1681 led to the accused being convicted of, quote, vile, abominable, and presumptuous attempts to buggery with a mare. The man was whipped, forced to sit on the gallows with a rope around his neck, branded in the forehead with the letter P for pollution. Wow. On the head. And banished from the colony where he lived. At the forehead. He had a giant P branded on his forehead. Uh, uh, uh. Ugh. For the most part, bestiality cases were prosecuted more harshly than sodomy offenses during that period. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So being so fucking animals, yeah, worse than fucking a gen- gentleman. I think. I mean, I get I, that. I agree with that. I get that. The animal can't consent. A dude can consent. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you ever been to the pound? <laughs> pretty horny fuckers. <laughs> Despite the harshness surrounding bestiality convictions, there were no more cases using deformed animals as evidence of guilt, as more scientific oh, so, views... So they needed actually more evidence than just like, <laughs> you look like that animal, you're its dad. Uh, uh, <laughs> as more scientific evidence, as more scientific views of hereditary became accepted. The decline of religious fervor in New England also saw a drop in bestiality convictions due to the difficulty in proving the charges. Right. What's a pig say? Uh, nothing. He's a fucking pig. You're guilty. So, uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, that was a time when you just needed to resemble an animal. <sighs> oh, God. And you, that would be... The poor guy. He was already fucking... He already the had first one, guy? He already has one eye. And then a fucking pig comes out with one eye, and then he gets accused of pit fucking and killed. How about the guy who has to go to a farm and finger a pig? <laughs> How about the, the, the guy who's just like, I didn't do anything. Like, they, they're, cr- again, creating the crime to prosecute the crime. <laughs> well, in order to find out if you fuck this sheep, put your cock in the sheep, and let's see how it takes it. Oh, it looks like it likes it. You guys have some sort of connection we knew. <laughs> Oh, fuck. So, 
I do not ever want to travel back in time. I mean, first of all, the smells. Second oh. of all, you can't slip up even a fucking oh, little no. bit. Not even a tiny bit. If the idea that you could just look like an animal and that's... Well, let's face it. They kill them for being an atheist. Yeah, fair. That's, at the end of the day, that's why they killed them. Right. For being an atheist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they made some shit up along the way. But why in this time you could so easily just be like, if you don't believe in God, we put you to death. Yeah, they could have done Why that. Why do you have to go the length needed, of being like, you fucked a pig? Because they needed God to give them a sign. And yeah. a one-eyed pig is a sign, as far as I'm concerned. I'll tell you, the more I hear about this God, the <laughs> crazier this motherfucker sounds. He just sounds like a lunatic. He just, he's created us, and then he's just judging everything. And by the way, he's picking sporting events, too, on the side. <laughs> He's doing all this stuff, and then on the side, he's also rooting for certain very, for certain football and soccer teams. He's very busy. Yeah, like I had no idea he was a big fan of Real Madrid and the Seattle yeah. Seahawks, but it turns out yeah, he loves he, them. He, on Sundays and weekends, he's just like the rest of us. He takes a little him time. During the week, though, he's all about finding pig fuckers. During the week, though, yeah, if there's a pig that resembles you. Yeah. Listen, well... um, Normal. All normal. <laughs> all normal stuff. Uh, Again, super normal. All right. Congratulations, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Oh, yes. It's Gareth. Not Gary. Stop it. Gare Force. Listen, I've got a bunch of stand-up shows coming up, and I want to see you there. We can hug. Uh, I will be at Rooster Tea Feathers in Sunnyvale, California, April 18th, 19th, and 20th. Then I will be in Chattanooga, Tennessee, June 18th. I will be at Nashville at Zanies, June 19th. I will be in Huntsville, Alabama, June 20th. I'll be in Atlanta, Georgia, June 21st, June 22nd. Then I will be in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, June 26th. Then I'll be in East Providence, Rhode Island, June 27th. Then I'll be in Boston, Massachusetts, and Boston, June 28th. Uh, That's two shows. I will be in Springfield, Massachusetts, June 29th, Rochester, New York, June 30th, and then July 5th through the 6th, Canada, I've heard your prayers, and I will answer them. I will be in Toronto. So come join me at the Comedy Bar. Go to GarethReynolds.com for tickets and information. That's right, Gareforce. We're calling you up. It's the big time. The big leagues. This went poorly. I am so excited to have Paramount Siding and Windows working on my home. Here are just a couple of reasons why I love them. First, they're family owned and operated, and they specialize in replacement siding and energy efficient windows. Get 24 months no interest and no payment financing or a 15% cash discount. That's amazing. Call 303-482-5656. That's 303-482-5656. Or visit ParamountSidingAndWindows.com. Paramount Siding and Windows, quality in everything they do.